Hi everyone, welcome to another ShareWise webinar. I am Caitlin Chung and today I am fortunate enough to be joined by the Managing Director of Arizona Lithium, Paul Lloyd. Thank you so much for joining me today, Paul. Thanks, Caitlin, and uh, nice to meet you and uh, thanks for the uh, time for all your subscribers. And so today, Paul will take us through an investor presentation, and then afterwards, you will all have an opportunity to ask him your questions. To do so, please feel free to pop in your questions in the Q&A chat box function down below. But uh, for now, I'll hand it off to you, Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. I'll, uh, I'll share the screen and uh, we'll move through the presentation. All right. Everyone's got that, I take it, Caitlin? Yep, we can see it. Okay. All right. Um, Arizona Lithium is a company that's listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Uh, I've been working uh, on this project and was the vendor of one of those projects uh, for about the last eight years. And the lithium industry has moved significantly and grown significantly in that time. It's a very exciting industry to be in with the EV revolution and the battery storage requirements for for lithium, there's been a lot of uh, ebbs and flows during that uh, eight years. And I think we're in one of those uh, at the moment with the commodity price at the spot rate lower. And uh, and I think that will start to move up in the new year. But the long-term outlook for um, lithium producers is, uh, is significant. There's a massive supply shortage and that will continue, in my opinion, for eight to 10 years. So. Um, let's just work through the presentation. What we have is we have two projects. They're both in study period. So they are way beyond the exploration phase and they're in the development phase. And the one that we're likely to take into production much quicker than the uh, Arizona one is a uh, oil field brine project. So we are more than likely going to be the first oil field brine uh, company to go into production in Q1 of 2025. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do between now and then, but it's progressing very well. So let's just move through the presentation. Uh, I mentioned that we're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange as the code AZL. Uh, being uh, very North American focused, we have a listing on the OTC QB market and we get a bit of volume on that market. Uh, I go to New York a few times a year. We do have a director in New York, Matt Blumberg, and we also have another executive director in Regina, Canada. Uh, so we have a real North American focus. We also have our Lithium Research Center in uh, Tempe in Arizona, part of uh, the Phoenix city, the fast growing city. And uh, so we're very North American focused, but we are ASX listed. We have 18,000 shareholders and uh, our market cap has come up a little bit lately uh, after showing some news flow in, in regards to the Prairie project, uh, but it had dropped down significantly. So we see it that we're just coming off the ropes, basically, and there's a long way to go. So at four cents, our market cap is uh, in that sort of 140, 150 range. We have been at 500 previously. And as we develop up these projects, we see that there's a lot of uh, shareholder growth potential there uh, because of the lithium industry and the growth in that industry, but also the quality of our product projects. So combined, our projects have a 6.1 million tonne uh, resource of lithium carbonate equivalent. And just to put that into perspective, the, uh, the current uh, consumption of that commodity is about 750,000 uh, tonnes per annum. So therefore, you've got about eight, year mine, eight years of the worldwide consumption. So you've got a, worldwide, a world significant resource at uh, both these projects. So they are serious projects and they are noticed by... Um, by the market, the lithium industry. So just to quickly look at the, the Prairie Lithium Project, it's in Saskatchewan, Canada, uh, very flat, uh, just across the border there uh, of the US, uh, infrastructure everywhere, an oil and gas producing region. We have a railway line running through the property. We have a large land holding, 350,000 acres uh, of uh, Crown Lease, and um, 
we have a very positive provincial government. When I was there at Easter time, uh, we walked into the resources minister's uh, office and, uh, and had a coffee with him. He's very engaging, he's very pro-business, and he's looking to replace oil and gas revenues with lithium revenues because this is an oil and gas producing region historically and still currently. So um, the Big Sandy project is the project that I've rendered into this company, and I'm very passionate about that project. We definitely haven't uh, put that on the back burner. It is a sedimentary project as compared to the Prairie project being a brine project, and I'll talk about that later, the differences. But the sedimentary project, the Big Sandy one, is very large. We have a resource on that of 320,000 tonnes, which is about 12 years of mine life as we take that project uh, further down the study uh, phase. We would uh, look to put that one into production in about five years. The reason for that is the permitting process in the US is much more uh, stringent, I suppose, than Canada, but also Canada has the advantage of being a traditional oil and gas region where we're operating. So a lot of those environmental studies, the baseline studies, the water treatment, et cetera, have all been completed many years ago. And that's a big advantage for our shareholders. But the Big Sandy project is a large project and uh, we will continue to develop that project. The lithium market, uh, a lot of uh, people on this webinar would know quite a lot about the uh, supply demand curve for lithium. And uh, uh, we are at the cutting edge with two lithium projects one particularly heading into production, we are the prettiest girl at the dance at the moment. So you have a lot of battery cell uh, companies knocking your door down to find out when you'll be in production and what product can you supply to them. So uh, from a point of view of the market, uh, we don't have any issues there. It does have some little ebbs and flows in regards to the commodity price but the long-term outlook for this commodity would have to be the best that I've ever seen in my career. So it really is the place to be. Being a potential brine producer from an oil and gas uh, region, that is something that the Australian market is not that familiar with. The Australian market is very familiar with spodumene producers, predominantly out of Western Australia. So we need to educate the market on how uh, these lithium projects work and uh, they do apply new technology which we call direct lithium extraction DLE and uh, that is being uh, commercially uh, developed and will be in production on a number of projects including the Prairie project in the next few years and we do see that there will be a, a revolution in the lithium industry as these uh, brine oil field type uh, projects start to uh, develop. Definitely in this industry, it's changing quickly. And uh, we have seen uh, ExxonMobil go into this industry and uh, they recently acquired 110,000 acres in the smackover formation in Arkansas in, uh, in the US. And they're looking to expand that and to produce from that. Uh, just to sort of, uh, as a segue, the hydrocarbon people basically perform the same as what we would be doing at the Prairie Project, and that is pumping the material from, uh, from below surface, filtering it, and then re-injecting the waste material. So that's why these large oil and gas companies are attracted to, to this industry. We're in North America. Well, well, we didn't choose to be in North America. We found two sensational lithium development projects in North America, but what a place to be for infrastructure, for permitting, and for the demand for the product. So this map is basically just trying to demonstrate the number of companies that are looking to build battery cell and refining capacity in North America. And uh, a lot of these uh, projects some are under construction, some are at the drawing uh, table, et cetera, and the planning table. But uh, Core Power is one that we know, and they're in Arizona. 
uh, LG are looking to build a plant in, in Arizona. This, this, the US will be swamped with these plants and where do they get the, the feed from to build these batteries? Lithium being a big part of that uh, battery. It is the commodity that is the, the lightest in the periodic table and the one that attracts the most um, voltage and, and can store energy. So therefore, when we talk about other battery combinations, etc., they all include lithium. And uh, so we're very confident of the lithium demand uh, going forward for our projects and likely to be in production at these projects for 50, 100 years because they are just that big. The Prairie Project is the one that we are sort of kicking some goals on recently and creating a very good news flow. We have 350,000 acres there in, uh, in Saskatchewan, just as I said, just near the border of the US. We have all the infrastructure we need and uh, we have a large resource there of 5.7 million tonnes of LCE, and 4 million of that is in the indicated category. So the reason why you can have such a large resource and be so confident with the resource is because of the oil and gas uh, previous drilling that has been done in the region. So our qua uh, qualified person can sign off on that because there's just so much data available. We have drilled three wells on the property, over a spacing of 27 kilometers and the grade was very consistent. So as a um, board of directors, we're very confident with that resource. And now we turn our attention to monetizing that resource for the benefit of all our shareholders, which our directors are big shareholders. Um, the land position up there it is substantial. And um, we, uh, we think that uh, will be there for something like 100 years at least mining this project because of the nature of the deposit. It is replenishing. It's a huge reservoir and we are pumping basically salty water, so a brine material. This project can be implemented on a modular basis. So rather than be staring down a capital cost of a billion dollars, we can implement this project on a modular basis where you're paying a uh, capital cost of 150 to say 175 million for, uh, for the first production of something like 6,000 tonnes per annum. Now these numbers will all be in the, the PFS that will be released at Christmas time. And uh, you'll see that they're very robust numbers and, uh, and we'll be back out in the market in January, educating our investors uh, in regards to the PFS results. This is the land holding that we have in at Prairie. North Dakota is the, um, the state to the, the south and also Montana. But we have focused in on the Canada in the Canada side of this basin, predominantly because of the legal system is much more attractive than, than the US system. So uh, we have more than enough land holding there to, uh, to keep our small but growing team very busy with this project. The, the formation that we are uh, targeting is called the Dupro formation, and that's 2,400 metres below surface. And um, we go down with the drill rig, we perforate that zone, and that flows very well, and we extract that salty water to surface. We put it through a filtration system, which we call direct lithium extraction, we upgrade the resource, the, uh, the uh, brine material, sorry, and we purify that brine material. We then uh, take it to another step of, uh, of processing and we create an extremely high grade lithium carbonate material. So what we're planning to do is to uh, produce as much lithium carbonate as we can from the operation of a pilot plant that's currently being run and get that out to potential off-takers, strategic investors, and uh, and sell producers that demand this product. And that will happen in the new year. As I mentioned about the infrastructure, if you think about drilling rigs, electricity, service rigs, staff, et cetera, we have all that there. And they have experience in the oil and gas industry. That is invaluable. If you compare us to some of the companies that are operating in South America, 
um, they would dream to have this sort of infrastructure and, uh, and skill sets. So we're uh, looking to exploit that as quick as possible. This is a slide in regards to the 27 kilometres uh, of strike that we, uh, we have drilled ourselves. And there's a, a larger, much larger land holding than just the 27 kilometres. And that's why we end up with such a large resource. Uh, we think that resource can grow as we do further drilling, but at the moment we're focused on production from this large resource. Okay, how do we start production at the Prairie Project? And what we've done is we've cleared the first pad for the uh, first module. And um, we have, as you can see from that picture there, and we do have a really good video on our website. If you're uh, interested, go to our website and have a look at that video. We've had uh, the uh, earth movers out there clearing the, the land. And that's basically a farmland out in the prairies that we lease from the local farmer. And we will put uh, a number of production wells there, a number of saltwater disposal wells and a small production facility in a, in a shed. And we'll produce lithium carbonate from this site uh, in Q1 of 2025. So uh, very exciting for, uh, for us to be doing that. And um, part of that process is to um, run our pilot plant and, uh, and finalise the direct lithium extraction technology. There are a number of companies in this space for uh, lithium brine production, and uh, we have a, uh, a large resource, as do most of the other companies, but we are in an ideal location and we are targeting uh, commercial production ahead of most of the, uh, of the competitors. So uh, E3 are a company that are in Alberta, Canada. So they have all the attractions of being in Canada with the permitting process, et cetera. Standard Lithium are in the US. And Exxon are the company, one of the largest companies in the world, have purchased uh, 110,000 acres in Arkansas. So the big boys are coming into this industry. And uh, there will be other oil and gas companies coming into this industry. And we look forward to that because we see the value of our company growing as, the, as these big companies enter the industry. Quickly to talk about the Big Sandy project. It's a, um, it's a sedimentary project. It has uh, similarities to a, a project in Nevada called Thacker Pass, which is in the construction phase. And uh, that attracted the investment of General Motors to the tune of $650 million. So these sedimentary projects are, uh, are serious, lar seriously large projects. And we see that this one can follow in the footsteps of Thacker Pass. Thacker Pass have been developing their project for about 20 years. We've been on this one for eight years. We've advanced it to the point where we have a resource of 320,000 tonnes and we've only drilled 4% of the land holding. Yeah, so we have a very large resource there at the project and we need to finalise the flow sheet on how we process the material. It is very different to the lithium brine project and in some ways more complicated and does require more capital expenditure. But right at the moment, we are just going through the processing, uh, sorry, the permitting process and uh, we have, uh, we're waiting on some drilling approvals to increase the mine life from 12 years to 50 years. So um, in, in mining terms, that's a long mine life. So if we can take it to the 50 year mine life, we will continue with testing of a, a pilot plant and finalize our DFS and look to funding. But this project is, uh, is a terrific project, but its production profile will be something like four to five years, where the Prairie project is Q1 2025. The market is so strong for this product, we want to get to production as quick as possible. The Big Sandy project, as I mentioned, we can take the, we can increase the mine life. By doing that, we drill just north and just south of the current resource. Not a complicated uh, ore body, very simple 
And if you think about uh, strip mining, we're not drilling uh, deep, we're only drilling down to 100 metres. This is pretty much at surface, this material, and it's in a gravelly sort of formation. So it can be easily treated with a sulfuric acid leach uh, process. So from a mining point of view, this is really a quarrying operation, a very simple, straightforward process. The advantages of this project is the fact that it is at surface. And um, I know that photo might be a little bit difficult to see for the people on the webinar, but there is a green clay material in here that uh, it contains the lithium and you just take a little bit of the overburden, remove that, put that to the side and then come through and mine it and then bring the overburden back over. So this project uh, from an ESG point of view and from a, a rehabilitation point of view is, uh, is first prize in the mining industry. We can do 100% rehabilitation on this project and we will definitely do that and um, it'll be a pinup for the, uh, the lithium industry. We look forward to uh, turning the dirt on this project uh, as soon as possible. Part of developing up these two projects, we decided to build a lithium research centre in Tempe in Phoenix. And the reason for that is that this industry is evolving very quickly. It's very difficult to get uh, contractors and suppliers to do the work on time. So we built a large facility that we utilise uh, for our own um, advantage. And we also look at other people's projects to see if we can maximise shareholder returns from that. The Lithium Research Centre has the world's most advanced lithium lab. And uh, we have five staff there working on the lithium brines that are currently coming from the Prairie Project and we advance the technology there. This industry is uh, one that it does apply a lot of new technology. It's not gold mining, it's not copper mining, it's lithium mining, and it's a developing, fastly developing industry that makes it very exciting. So um, we see that the Lithium Research Centre will be around for many years and will be a commercial advantage to, to the company in looking at other projects and developing our two projects that we have the R&D that we've done there, we have produced a very high grade lithium brine material and we have produced lithium carbonate at the LRC ourselves. The grade of the uh, material was so high that we had to get uh, independent verification. So you can see on our website an ASX announcement to that effect. If you want to be in the mining industry, you want to be in the lowest cost quartile of producers and producing the highest quality product. Definitely our, uh, our Prairie project will be in that category. So that encourages us greatly to fast track the project. The board of directors, um, my experience is um, in the mining industry. I'm based in Perth and I've done a lot of IPOs and RTOs. And, uh, and this project is one that uh, I am 150% uh, behind and I can talk all day in regards to these two projects. Zach Maurer is our executive director based in Regina, Canada. He was the vendor of the Prairie project and he's doing an exceptionally good job with the pilot plant and the PFS. Uh, Barnaby is our uh, non-exec chairman and he's very experienced in New York as a broker there and we uh, that opens a lot of doors for us in the, the North American market. Matthew Blumberg is a uh, Yale MBA graduate and he's working in New York on behalf of the company. So uh, and we have some very experienced team of uh, technical people and financial people which I we are growing. It's not easy to grow a team in a fastly evolving industry and we have some extremely good people. Brett would be uh, on the technical side, top five in the world. It's a very impressive guy. So shareholders, uh, or if you want to become a shareholder, you want to understand where the value is going to be created. And uh, our news flow uh, is coming from the Prairie Project predominantly, and that is uh, building the first commercial pad and uh, completing the pilot plant operations that are currently being run in, in Saskatchewan. That will prove the DLE technology, the direct lithium uh, extraction technology. It's new technology. There's a lot of doubters out there in the marketplace, 
And we have found that this DLE, the third party DLE works exceptionally well for our brine material. And we see that uh, we'll be producing in Q1 of 2025. We're gonna do that by completing our preliminary feasibility study uh, by the end of this year and put that out to the market, give the shareholders a chance to digest that. And, uh, and then most importantly, we've been talking to a lot of majors in the lithium space and in the battery uh, production space and they want to see a final product. So we need to take that lithium brine that's been upgraded from the pilot plant, bring it down to our lithium research center and produce the final product and get that out to strategic investors and off takers. That'll be an important uh, milestone in uh, the first half of, of next year. And then we've turned the dirt on the first production um, pad the next step is to commence drilling and that'll be be commenced next year in the first half uh, straight after the winter basically and we'll be drilling a number of holes to start producing lithium uh, from that 2400 meter depth uh, and pumping to surface uh, so 2024 will be a a year for us uh, a very busy year an evolving year and a very uh, symbolic year for the company because we will be going very hard at that uh, construction of the of the main commercial plant, and the plan is to be in, in production by Q1 of the following year, so 2025, and um, to be the the first commercial producer of uh, lithium brine from an oil field project would be very satisfying to, to our board and to our technical team. So we're extremely focused on that. And um, I'll hand back to Caitlin if we've got some questions. Thank you so much, Paul. That was a really good insight into Arizona and your story and all the things that you guys are doing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, for those who have just joined us midway through, um, please feel free to pop any questions into the Q&A um, chat function on the Zoom. Um, I see someone has their hand raised. Christy, did you oh. have, did you have a question for Paul? Okay. Okay, Christy, maybe you can um put your uh question in the chat. But we have a few other questions submitted. So um. Damien asked, hi, Paul, do you think there could be further resource expansion at Prairie? Yes, definitely. Uh, the, we just need to drill some more holes and get a better understanding of, uh, of the land. And part of that will be drilling the commercial holes and uh, we'll get a better understanding of the reservoir. But at the moment, those numbers of 5.7 million tonnes are quite conservative. So I would expect uh, that resource to increase but we, we are focused in the short term on production. Okay. Um, and more questions we've had submitted beforehand. Is NTEC still involved in the permitting process? So uh, NTEC is the mining arm of the Navajo Nation uh, in the US, the largest tribe in the US. And uh, at the moment, they are heavily involved in helping us with getting drilling approvals on the Big Sandy project. I work extremely close to the NTEC people. They are a large coal mining operation and uh, they have a lot of experience in permitting and, uh, and mining. So we are very close to formalizing our relationship with NTEC, but they are uh, heavily involved in the engagement of all stakeholders in regards to the Big Sandy project. And so I know, uh in your presentation, Prairie has been at the forefront of your projects. Is the only thing we're waiting on for Big Sandy to continue the approvals? So when we we get approvals, Caitlin, we can then take our resource up to the uh, indicator category and complete our DFS. Right at the moment, we can't complete a DFS until we get our resource into the indicated category. So uh, we are waiting on that drilling approval and it just means the engagement of all the stakeholders and explaining to those stakeholders exactly what we're 
planning to do with the drilling operations and tech are helping out significantly with that. Right. Okay. Um, other questions we have is how is AZL tracking in regards to time against the average? Is that in regards to the permitting? I I I believe so. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing they've... yes. So the request for additional drilling, uh, it, it has been a long time with the Bureau of Land Management and they're the landowners. They're a federal agency and uh, we're not happy with how long it's taken to get the approvals. I'm confident we will get the approvals, but uh, it is beyond what you would expect uh, in regards to the approvals. But we are working our way through that process. The, Bureau of Land Management have all the information that they require. We're just waiting on their decision. Yes, I think a lot of shareholders um, were waiting to hear that because I received so many questions on that specific question. <laughs> and the management team as well, Caitlin. <laughs> um, you answered this in your presentation, but in case they missed it, when do you expect the company to be able to sell the lithium and make a return to shareholders? So if you start producing lithium carbonate from the Prairie project in Q1 of 2025, you, you instantly sell that material. The market is so strong. And I would suspect by the time we start commercial uh, construction or construction of the commercial operation, we will have uh, an offtake type arrangement or strategic funding in place from one of those end users. Um someone wants to ask the growth projections of AZL. Sorry, I didn't, I missed that. What was that? The growth projections of AZL. Right. So growth can be uh, interpreted in many different ways. I'm so assuming we talk about... they're asking about financial. Performance. Right. Yes. Uh, so if you look at other uh, lithium companies in this space, uh, for brine, et cetera, they have a substantial higher market capitalization. E3 is a company listed on the TSX. They're in uh, Alberta, the adjoining province in Canada. I think their market caps are 300 million, 400 million. Lake have quite a large uh, market capitalization and they're down in South America with uh, you know, infrastructure difficulties that we don't have. So uh, these companies do attract large market capitalizations. Um, Standard is one that's another brine project in Arkansas, and that's listed in the US. That has, I th I, last time I looked, it was like an $800 million market capitalization. So there's plenty of growth for us. We are coming off a very low base, and we just need to show the market that we can put this project into production. And the PFS is the first step in that. And for um, those that are watching that aren't familiar, what is the difference between the brine and the sedimentary project type? Yes. So it's more about how you produce the lithium. So from a brine project, you take the salty water to surface, you filter it, you upgrade it, and then you all the rejects go back down into the to the uh, salt water disposal well. You then take that material that's quite pure and you put it through a couple of stages of processing and you just happen to get lithium carbonate of extremely high grade. So the processing steps after a very good direct lithium extraction process uh, are very straightforward. With a sedimentary project, the lithium is wrapped up in a gravelly sort of rock material. You have to free the lithium from that uh, gravel material and how you do that is via a sulfuric acid leach inside vats with no escape to the atmosphere, et cetera. You put that into a liquid form. And once you've got that into a liquid form using sulfuric acid, it's pretty much the same process after that. Right. Okay. And is one or the other method more costly? Uh, de definitely the sedimentary project is more costly, but can produce very large quantities of lithium carbonate. The brine projects all over the world are in the lowest cost quartile of lithium producers. So in saying that, I assume since there's a lower cost to produce the Prairie project, we're, experience, we're expecting a higher yield of return compared to Big Sandy? Yes, 
Yes. And remembering that direct lithium extraction is new is a new technology. So previously in the brine projects, they pump the brine out into large evaporative ponds. So the capital expenditure was quite high and their recovery rates were about 40%. We're expecting a recovery rate of uh, 92 to 94%. So about double. So therefore our costs are significantly lower than the existing brine projects in South America. And there's, a, there's one small brine project in Nevada uh, called the Silver Peak Mine. It doesn't produce a lot, but Albemarle, one of the big lithium companies owns that project. Um, and I'll address a few more questions. Is there a possibility to partner with an electric vehicle or battery manufacturer to provide part of the financing? Yes, definitely. And part of that process is to complete the PFS and to provide product to those companies to provide a lithium carbonate so they can do their own testing on that material. That will happen in the new year. Okay, all right. Well, with that being said, I think we'll leave it at there. Thank you so much, Paul, for joining me today. And thank you to everyone that has tuned in. Thanks very much, Caitlin. Thanks uh, for everyone's time and listening. And if you uh, want to contact me or jump on our website, feel free. Thank, Thank you. you.